Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this last session of uh, Pray 40 Days. It's been a wonderful journey for me and for hopefully all of you as well. It's pretty neat. I get to see a lot of the fruit of it because people will email and message me. And one of the things that I'm going to ask that you do at the end of this would be to do that. There is a survey that you should be getting uh, when you finish up the program. So if you can just let us know what was good for you, if you have any ideas for uh, improvement. But I think if you could just share whatever has been that most beautiful, intimate, uh, wonderful encounter that you've had. My promise was that if you did this pray 40 days, that by the end of it, you would have personally encountered our Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in a very deep and profound way. So I trust that you have. And if you haven't, there's still a couple more, more days. And it's important that we don't give up uh, even in the last few days, because God can work and often does work at the very end and, and surprise us. So keep praying there. But I thought I would read this. This is a lady from Montreal. And she said, I have no clue how I stumbled upon Pray 40 Days. I was looking for something to follow this Lent, desperately feeling low in my spiritual life and searching to find my way. I was lost. I was attending Mass daily, praying daily, but empty. I prayed I prayed to find my way this Lent, and while searching online, I found Pray 40 Days and gave it a try. You will never know how far you have reached me and how much you have enriched my spiritual life. It has been completely life-changing. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Father. I share that because, um, well, especially for those that have helped us do Pray 40 Days and put, put this on, these are perfect examples of people that we try, we're trying our, to, to reach somebody like this, who was desperately feeling low in her spiritual life and searching and was lost, even though she was going to daily mass and praying daily. Um, we were able to, to reach her and help her really have a, a profound, as she said, a life changing experience during this pray 40 days. So um, take, take the time if you can, not only for ourselves to let us know and to, um, just share what God has done, but also for yourself to look back over these 40 days. And if you've journaled, it's very helpful. And this is a good time to do it during Holy Week. Take some time and just go back and reflect on the whole time, the whole experience of Pray 40 Days. And you will probably notice more than you thought how much you have encountered God throughout. When I finish my eight-day retreats or 30-day retreats or when I'm directing people to, I ask that they go through their journal and um, either put a star or a heart, or I, I use the letter G for grace, what has been the grace. And so I just go through that whole time and you'll begin to see and realize and remember what God has done during you in this time. So much of our, our spiritual life is about remembering because we're very quick to forget how, how God is working and that he is working. We're going to be doing a session, as I mentioned too, on discernment of spirits coming to, to know the voice of God. And that's one of the, the rules uh, that the enemy, Satan, will try to take away those memories. So he causes us to think that we have never felt God's presence before, that we're not feeling him now, and that we're never going to feel it again. And that for me is the easiest sign that I know I'm in desolation and that Satan is, he's he's under, um, he's giving me these thoughts and these thoughts are not of God. For me, that's just been a very key uh, rule for discernment is that knowing that, that if it seems like I've never felt God's presence, I'm not feeling it now and never will again, I'm in desolation and none of that is true. And uh, so these rules will help you to realize when you're in desolation, when the enemy is attacking, and then how to all, how to really turn back into to consolation and to realize the grace that God is, is doing. But one of these practical tools is just going through your journal and remembering and going deeper into whatever you've experienced. St. Ignatius would also call a prayer of repetition. So if you have had experiences that you've done or prayed through, Ignatius would say to, to go and keep praying with that, to go deeper into that. I spent a whole year just praying on the Song of Songs. Um, I've spent 10, no, 20 years almost praying on the prodigal father. That's why that's why the scripture passage is, is so 
rich for me. It's something that I can just keep going back to and, and draw more and more, um, not only meaning, but closeness and intimacy with God. And he'll, he will give you your own scripture passage that you are able to enter into. And, and maybe it is one of these that you've experienced over these 40 days that you can just keep praying with over and over and over and, and going deeper and deeper and deeper into it. We'll talk about in the end how to practically go forward as you do pray 40 days. But I just wanted to just give you all a little bit of um, good news, for me at least, as we get ready for this. So we are on, we're coming towards the end here. What day is this? 35, Father. We are on day 35. 30, yes. So if you can let us know in the comments section how many days you have done out of 35. I want to see what everybody's done here so far, if, if anyone's been able to do every single day. And again, if you've missed a day or haven't been able to, uh, something happened or came up, Holy Week right now is a great time to go back and make up those times or days. You don't have to, you could do it after Easter too, but I just find that this is, uh, it's really good to dedicate yourself to prayer this week. As much as you can clear your schedule, try not to take on any more um, commitments that you have, like really just dedicate, because Satan will try to take away this time, make this a holy week. So just really try to find time to dedicate yourself to God. Increase your prayer, your fasting, your almsgiving. So all three of those things, uh, I don't know if you made any resolutions towards the beginning of, of Lent, but go back to those. And even if you have stopped doing it, um, renew yourself during this Holy Week. Go back to those resolutions that you, that you made to increase your prayer, to fast and to almsgive. And then I would invite you even to intensify each one of those. So intensify your prayer during this Holy Week, Intensi intensify your fasting. Um, and fasting really does mean not eating. Um, so I would encourage you to try that, try fasting. Some people have low blood sugar, uh, some people have different medical conditions, but see if you can just stretch that a little bit. You know, if it's an hour or two hours or half a day, or you miss a meal or miss two meals, or try fasting 24 hours if you've never done it before, or you can fast the whole week. Um, but, you know, do what you can, your body, your body will tell you, uh, but give it a try, try to do it. And then um, if you made any other, a lot of people, instead of fasting, they do some other form of penance by making a sacrifice. So if you've given something up, go back to that, deepen that, um, really, really be uh, strong in that. Uh, a lot of people give up social media. So delete those, uh, uh, widgets from the home screen, the shortcuts from the home screen, and really try to make this uh, as free from distraction as you can. Try to keep the TV off. Really let yourself enter into pray into this Holy Week. If you're looking for additional scripture to pray with, it's really good to pray with the, the readings for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, most especially the vigil. If you've never prayed through or read through the, all those readings on your own, a lot of times, even at mass, you don't get them all. Sometimes they're, they're abbreviated for the sake of time, but it's so good to read them front to back because it's our entire salvation history. So you can find those uh, readings online, uh, or if you have a, a missile from your church or anything like that. If you don't know how to find the readings, just Google daily readings, and that will take you to the, uh, the USCCB's website where you can, you just kind of click day by day. And what I do is just click forward until you get to Friday or Saturday or Sunday. But that might be a, a nice thing to do. Sunday also has a, a number of different readings to choose from. So there's early morning, mid morning, midday, mid afternoon. Uh, so you can pray through all those different reflections on the uh, resurrection. And certainly, of course, the passion. So Holy Thursday, it's always taken from John. So you can read John but you could also read the other gospels as well. Try to read each of the gospels accounts of the passion. So those could just be good ways to make this a wonderful Holy week. So it looks like everybody did 35. we got a couple 33, 34s, 32. So good job, everyone.
you're on a good streak. So be strong these last couple of days. We'll start now with the prayer and then I'll kind of talk through the, the readings for this week. And we're going to spend most of our time uh, re reflecting on now how to go forward, what, what we're going to do after Pray 40 Days has come to an end. Because my hope has always been that when somebody does this program, that by the end of it, they have the skills to continue on praying afterwards. I've not found that to be totally true. So I think a lot of people have difficulty after it's over and having no tools really and just continuing on to go. So I'm going to give you some practical ways of how you can best equip yourself. And just like we have those five P's of prayer, the first being preparation, you want to prepare for how you're going to pray after pray 40 days is over. Because if you get to Easter Sunday and then Monday comes and you haven't thought about it, it's going to be really hard to know where to go. So you're going to want to spend probably this Holy Week also thinking about how am I going to continue to maintain this and now learn to pray on my own with scripture, with one of the different or all the different, uh, different types of prayers. And you can go with whichever one you personally like, or you can just try a different one each day and see, see what you like to do as well. So we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I thank you for this wonderful time of Lent and this group of people that you have allowed me to journey with and to foster their life of prayer. And I ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon them now just as the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray, I invite them to ask you, teach us how to pray, teach me how to pray. Bless our time this evening, that we can share some of the fruit of what you've done. And give me the gift of the Holy Spirit of wisdom and counsel, right judgment, discernment of spirits, fear of the Lord. We pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us not from every evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've also found, uh, I've heard from a number of people that the praying with the Sunday mass was help, very helpful. So I would, um, I'll show you uh, another uh, tool we have for that to help you do that as you continue on after pray 40 days too. We have a great uh, set for that. Um, so this was our uh, last contemplative prayer and this was praying in nature. So it'll be good to hear just how you experience God in nature. I know that this is one for most people that are not even familiar with meditating or contemplating or even church. This is how a lot of people experience God is by going out and, and being in nature. Um, and so this is something that you could always do as well. If you're not sure what to pray with or how to pray, just go out and be in nature, be in God's creation for some time. And then this uh, scriptural relaxation, Jeremiah 1, 4 through 9. This is one of those key passages that you could pray with your whole life. The word of the Lord came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't even talk about conception, but before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That you were always in the mind of God. And so... You have a, a plan and a purpose, and you're, you're here for a reason. But the, the, the beautiful part of this is that not only did he create you and know you before you, he formed you in the womb, but he continues to create you. He continues to, you're, you're, we're still a part of his creation. But I love that there's this, uh, 
the prophet says, do not say to me, I am too young. You're left that, that um, to whomever I go, to whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. So the, there can be a fear of us of, of living life. Like, what are we supposed to do? And this beautiful phrase that the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying to me, see, I place my words in your mouth. I think that's just a, uh, that's a feeling sensory image that could be very good to, to rest with and to be with the Lord touching our mouth and giving us the words to speak in all those difficult situations. These passages, by the way, that I picked out uh, for the, the Pray 40 Days, these are, are passages that have been near and dear to me over all the years of my priesthood, all my retreats, the Ignatian retreat, spiritual exercises. And so these are passages that lend themselves very well to, to prayer and meditation. Not all of scripture does it so easily, you know? So if you read from Levit Leviticus in the Old Testament, you're probably gonna have a difficult time praying with that or making sense with that. So these are really hand-chosen ones. And I say that because, again, these are, are passages that you can go back to, hopefully, time and time again and go deeper and deeper and deeper with them. And the uh, guided meditation on day 37, this is a great one for after Easter but it's the appearance on, the appearance on the road to Emmaus. So when Jesus appears to them on the road to Emmaus, what I like about this passage and meditating with it is that there, there, there's these two disciples and they're walking away from the, the uh, death of our Lord and the burial. They did not, they didn't see the resurrection themselves. They heard that some women went to the tomb and it was empty and they were sad. They were walking away sad. And in the midst of that, the Lord appears to them. So this Emmaus walk, I think, is a good one for us to imagine with, because any time we're feeling sad or disconnected from God, we can walk with and imagine conversing with someone. And in the midst of that, God appears. I also encourage people after Easter to do an Emmaus walk physically. So find somebody to walk with and then share how God has been working in your life over the season of Lent and now as we enter into Easter time. And we all know sometimes a good friend is just somebody that, that listens to us. So find someone that, that is a good listener that you can talk to and just share your journey. And, and if you can do the same for them as well. Okay, day 38 is uh, praying like a pirate. So the acknowledge, relate, receive, respond. And this is uh, Jesus and Peter, and this is in John 21, 15, when they had finished breakfast. I love this one. And Simon Peter says, do you love me? He, Jesus says to Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? And he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Again, do you know, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Then I, this is so interesting because Peter was distressed that he had, the Lord asked him a third time, like, why does he keep asking me this? Does he think that I'm not, uh, that I don't love him? I'm not sure, but this, this is why this one makes a really good uh, window for praying like a pirate because Peter himself is experiencing distress and tension when the Lord asks him these questions. And he's, he's, he's doing this so that he can commission him to go out and to feed his sheep. But he also says, the same kind of death that I experienced, you will go through. And then he said, follow me. And that's true for each and every one of us, for each and every one of you, that in your life, you're going to go through the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. That's what's going to be your full union with him. And that's what's going to make you saints is that you, that you go through this Paschal mystery together with our Lord. And then Lexio Divina, day 39. 
So um, this is based on John chapter 20. And this is the Doubting Thomas, which is a great, great passage because Thomas is having trouble believing in the resurrection. This is good for all of us as we enter into Holy Week and prepare for Easter, that all of us, if we, if we glimpse at the mystery of what the resurrection is, there's probably going to be some natural doubt for us. And what I love about this is that Thomas, the Lord succumbs to Thomas's demand. So Thomas says, unless I see the, the wounds in his side and his hands, I will not be unbelieving. I will not believe, but be unbelieving. The amazing thing is Jesus acquiesced to this. He, he, he allows for this demand that Thomas has, and, and he shows him his hands in his side. And not only does he say that, he says, give me your finger, put your finger in my wound, touch my side, so that you may not be unbelieving, but believe. What do you need from the Lord in order to believe? If you could ask him anything, what, what would it be? What, what, what would help you to believe in the power of the resurrection? And maybe it's even right now in your life. What would help you right now to believe in that power? And finally, the last day will be uh, the contemplative prayer again. And this will be on John 17, which is the priestly prayer of Jesus. This chapter, you could take the whole chapter, and actually you could take the whole 14 to 17 and, and spend an eternity on. But these are, this is Jesus's prayer for his disciples and his prayer for you that we may experience and encounter who he is and, and be deeply in union with him. And so that's, I left that off as the final prayer because that is the priestly prayer of Jesus, his desire for all of you in prayer. So what we'll do now is we'll take some time just to uh, hear from this last week how it was for anyone. Uh, also, if you have any questions. So when you share, let us know what, uh, what day you're, you're referring to and what type of prayer and what passage, if you can remember. And then... Um, if you have your journals as well, it's, it's very helpful if you can just go from the journal and read from that. So we'll do a little bit of uh, just sharing. And then after that, we're going to uh, hear if you have any questions about all of this experience or questions about going forward. And then at the end, I'm going to give you just some direction in terms of how to go forward and continue on in this prayer 40 days. So how was your last eight days? What was your favorite prayer? What um, what did, how did you most experience God or what was mo most real for you? Let's have some time of sharing. So I'll just kind of go through. And again, if you don't want to share, shake your head no. If you'd like to share, um, Esther will unmute you. So we'll start here with Linda. Linda Anderson. No, sh okay. Esther Cook. Shake your head. No, I don't. Okay. Keith, uh, Keith are you? He's got to be unmuted, Esther. So, sorry, Father. I'm, I'm looking for him. Did you ask for Clifford or Cleve? Keith. Keith. Okay, I'm not seeing Keith. Hold on a second. Sorry. You check up our Keith. You can't keep Keith muted. <laughs> no, he's, he's asked to unmute. Keith? All okay. right. I think I'm unmuted now. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know what? The, I'm just thinking back this, this past week. Um, I, I can't say anything directly related with, uh, with pray 40 days, but you know, one of the things that always kind of comes back to me is just the, um, you know, I guess that how God's blessed me to be able to, to do things like this and help people pray further and such a blessing to do that, um, as well as like the RCIA program, seeing people and how God just interacts and touches them. And I think just hearing those stories that you mentioned at the beginning, Father, 
uh, is what, you know, keeps me going back to prayer myself. And also just having a community like this that we can all kind of lean on is something really special. And um, I think is a, as a blessing uh, for me. So appreciate everybody being here and, uh, and kind of supporting us along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, it's an amazing time. If Keith, uh, he's on the RCA team, so he he gets to see these people over the whole year grow and now be in, invited into the faith, and it's a it's an amazing time for that. Dorothy, Cindy, yeah, you're you're good. You're good. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. Um, I just I think the one that. I resonated most with was the wedding feast of Cana day 32. Um, I guess what struck me was the fact that, you know, it was a reminder about Jesus and, you know, how he'd like to have personal interactions with people. And sometimes I struggle with that because my tendency is more to be, you know, an introvert or I, um, not necessarily isolated, but I enjoy solitude and serenity and, um, you know, I, I just thought of that scene where, you know, Jesus was celebrating in the, he, you know, it was one of the times like in, when I watched the chosen where he was smiling, you know, and it's like, you know, I, I need to do more of that. Sometimes I have a tendency to just think more of what I need to get done, you know, and he just was mm -hmm. trying to remind me that I needed to trust him, um, with what I needed and that I should be, you know, more grateful for the opportunities to get to know him and others better. And, um, and so what I wrote down as my response was, you know, how they saved the, they used to serve the best wine in the beginning and then wait for the less <laughs> better wine at, you know, at the end. But I thought, you know, instead of just sometimes struggling, just go for the best. You know what the best is, go to Jesus first. And, you know, don't bother with all this stuff, you know, this other ways to try to do things. So <laughs> that's what I got out of it, so. Good, and that um, maybe introversion is a, a gift too, because you have a, a, not only an ability, but a desire just to be in solitude. And it's, it's in that solitude that we will hear his voice. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Linda Rark, no. Barbara. Thank You're you. good. Thank you, Father. John 2, 1, 12. I'm sorry, the next one. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 8, the way of love. And what really spoke to me this way, this was love in the words of all things. And this really spoke to me. Um, with my husband Gene sinking further into dementia during the last 12 years mm. of our marriage, there was a lot to hold on to. And um, he never lost his person. He never lost me as a person. He never lost those around him as people. And so I felt it was a testament to the goodness of God that she knew who he was, who I was, and who we were together right to the end of life and he was able to die at home under hospice care. And shortly after we pa he passed, while we awaited the bearers from the funeral home, I was able to recite the Divine Mercy Castle oh, with, with the Marian Fathers for TV right at his side and felt that we were both very, very blessed. I feel sorrow for the times that I've neglected to show God's love to others, and I want to try every day to show the Father's love to others, not to do, get attention, but to do his will. Wow. That's wonderful, thank you. And marriage is a sacrament the two of you loving each other during those times of sickness and in health, all the days of your married life, uh, re reveals to us God's love and his, his fidelity. So thank you for that. And yeah, the, the love endures all things. 
So that's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to talk about divine mercy at the end. Um, I'm so glad you talked about or mentioned that because it, I don't know that enough Catholics know about the uh, the power and the grace that is given to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet for someone who is dying or who has died. Esther's got a image. Let's see that, Esther. Oh, the Catholic Bible, Divine Mercy Catholic Bible. Wonderful. Yeah, so I'll talk, we'll talk about it at the end because Divine Mercy is the Sunday after Easter. Thank you, Clifford. And nothing. Okay, Maura. Hi. Um, so I like the um, love is pa love is patient because I've been trying to be patient with myself, and I've been going through the. I've been going reading through the book. It's just that like I get so pulled, and then. And so I feel like I haven't journaled as much as I wanted to, but like I've been able to keep up every day with reading. So I, you know, um, I don't know. And then I, I've been trying to discern um, with stuff, with, with Jesus about questions I have and bring, show me clarity of this and this and this. And then tonight my son showed me something that I had questioned all along and I didn't believe him and then I'm like oh I guess this is your way of having me believe you mm. well love is patient God is patient with you too I He's know patient with you. yeah I just feel <laughs> frustrated tonight but yeah. I think it I think it <laughs> has to do with like, I don't know. I, I have to be patient and loving towards the people, but at the same time, it's bringing up a lot of anger mm -hmm. and frustration. Yeah. And sometimes when those, when there's a lot of anger or a lot of um, impatience or frustration, that is those, so those, the, the enemy works in that too, but a lot of those are human things that, it helps for prayer if those are worked out or worked on, you know, so either um, either with somebody or with a, a counselor or with a mentor or friend, even, you know, just someone, someone that can help you process those things so uh -huh. that um, we're not so overwhelmed when we sit down to pray. Yeah, so I have a therapist, so I have her tomorrow morning. Oh, so. good, good. Yeah. Well, that's good. And, you know, if you miss days, if you didn't journal, if you feel like you didn't do this perfectly, God has done what, what he wants to with you during this time. All of you have been very generous with him. Um, so just just trust that he he's able and, and has done what he wants to do with you. So there's no need to have done this perfect. Uh, again, though, if you ever wanted to go, go back to it or, or catch up on days that you missed or um, go deeper into a passage, that is a good uh, invitation for the future so thank you yeah Mara. i've been reading every day i've been reading every day so um it's just journaling it's hard to get to some days and you don't have to if, if journaling doesn't work don't 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 force it it, it does it it does actually i'm a writer so <laughs> but yeah. i plan to go through this again and well, good I know you mentioned something about discernment. So I definitely want to do that as well. Your program on discernment. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. All right, Jean. Yeah, yeah we, um, this is Nick, but we, we did nature. We enjoyed that one today yeah, because the, the weather was, it was about 75 degrees and we went outside and there's a little pond behind where we live. And we just, we just looked at the ducks and they're starting to nest at spring. And it was just, uh, a good intro into um, in, into the, the Easter season. Uh, one other thing, yesterday after Mass, we went to Panera's for breakfast. And as we came out, we heard a familiar voice and we're looking around. Somebody was listening to your uh, pray, uh, you know, <laughs> you outside me? tables. And we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Where do you live? In Florida, right? Wow. Here. 
Tampa, Florida. <laughs> I wish I were there personally whispering my voice. I know. That's what I said. You can't be him. But <laughs> oh, that's great. It's so great. Thank you very much. This has been great. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us and joining <laughs> with us. Glad you got to enjoy that nature. And yeah, that's, uh, that's why we celebrate Easter now. Get to see the, mm -hmm. the spring. Elizabeth. Um, okay. Well, I, I had my Holy Week all planned out. <laughs> I live alone. I was going to be silent and be in this monastery, but God had other plans. So my Oh, that's right. You were supposed to go. Yeah. Well, no, I'm that I'm doing at the end of the month. Okay. But I was going to do my own thing here at home with your pray 40 days and all my readings. But um, as it turned out, my one of my adult sons has COVID, so he's in quarantine in the back of my house. So now I'm cooking three times a day. <laughs> and my favorite priest is leaving. And that, I mean, uh, I, I'm really crushed. I'm telling you, I, when he told me, I started crying. You know, it's anyway, he's such a holy man of God. So everything kind of started caving in on me. And then today at Panera, I'm coming out and this lady pulls out right in front of me and I hit the brakes and my food falls on the floor. It didn't spill out or anything, but I said some choice words. And then God clearly said to me, you really want to suffer with me this week? Mm. You can get really upset or you can, you can walk with me. This is just an inconvenience. Mm. And so it turned everything around because I realized I choreographed my land. I didn't get out of the way. And so through all of that we're doing, I'm really getting closer one day at a time to complete surrender to God, mm. whatever he wants. And I wow. finally surrendered this beautiful priest and I saw where he's going and it's lovely. So, you know, his talents, his beauty will be appreciated in a, a different setting. I think people missed who he was. They absolutely missed it because they had an expectation of who he, who he should be. Uh, and yeah. So they kind of went after him. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, honey, it was awful. But thank God, I, I feel so blessed that I was able to be there to journey with him through that. What an honor, because one of my devotions is I, I pray for priests and for souls in purgatory. That's not my choice. That's God. So, um, yeah. So what I, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I fully surrender, but it is whatever God whatever, whatever. I'll, I'll cook three times a day. I mean, I had finally gotten to the point where I can eat cheese and crackers for dinner and I'm fine, mm -hmm. but I've got this hungry adult in the back of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking and I'm an Italian mama. My God, we cook. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm feeding and he's so appreciative, but, and my, and this wonderful priest, I'm just, I know God has him. And he's going to be very blessed where he's at. It's very beautiful. And I'm happy for him. So, yes, yeah, surrender, good. whatever. I don't know if what end, whatever is a surrender, but it's about as close as I can be right now. Because I'm very vulnerable and kind of weepy, you know, just the sadness of the world. I mean, how can you, how can you not think about mm -hmm. those innocent victims and the Russians and the Ukrainians. I mean, it's just awful. So that's where I'm at. In the hands of God, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, I got busted. Yeah. All is grace, you know. So even if you look yeah. back and think you orchestrated everything, God, God, God is working even in, in the midst yeah. of all that. What's amazing is the grace that you're receiving to surrender. And I would encourage you to ask him, beg him. Yes. For a full, complete surrender of your will. Thank you. Because I am. Ask for that grace. I will. You desire it. Thank you. Thank you. I also beg him for signal graces. I always say, Lord, this is your daughter who needs signs and signals. I don't do well. You know, I've been through a dark night of the soul. I don't want to go there again. I, I would if I had to, but, and he always comes through. Always, 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 always. 
it'll be a song, it'll be a, a license plate, it'll be something somebody says, it'll always a little signal grace to remind me it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. here. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank if you could you. pray for me too, I would. I will. I do. Um, I do. Father. I, I know love how difficult it is when a priest that you love moves and just rips your heart out, rips, rips my heart out too. But um, yeah. that's a tough thing. It's real hard. Yeah. Because you hear the voice of God in him. And then one morning at mass, I was kind of weeping. And God said to me, keep your focus on me, not on the human. I chose him. I made him a priest. I'm going to take good care of him. But you have to keep your focus on me, not on good. him. Yeah. So that was, that was good. That helped too. Good. But yes, I will pray for you especially. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think Maureen, you're good. You're on if you want to talk. Oh. Oh. Hi, I'm Maureen. Um, it's this whole um, this this whole Lent so far has been really really powerful. Um, and um, I. Uh, had one day that I really struggled, I got frustrated is um yesterday I was all set to um pray with the mass. I diagnosed with bronchitis a week ago and but by yesterday I was fine, I thought I was fine to go to mass. So I um I got up and yesterday morning I listened to the pray 40. Um, praying with mass for yesterday, um, took a shower, went to, went to church, got there a little early, earlier than I normally would even. And, um, like a minute before mass started, I got into a coughing fit for the first time. Really, I, mean, I had been over the coughing fits from the bronchitis for like three days. I hadn't really had too many. And, um, so I got into a coughing fit and I felt all of a sudden very self-conscious and I couldn't stay I, I didn't feel like I could stay in the mass because and I got up and I my original plan was to just step outside the church get over my coughing fit pop a lozenge in my mouth go inside sit down and it, it didn't work and or I didn't work it and um, by the time I got outside the church I I was flustered I was still in a coughing fit I was upset and I, I was just really frustrated with myself and I walked to the car, got in the car and drove home and I didn't go back into the, I didn't go back into the church and um, the whole way home, I was, I, I was just feeling like I, it's hard to explain what I was feeling. I was frustrated and I was sad, but more I was feeling guilty. Like, how could I, how could I not walk back in there? And um, so yesterday was the hardest day I've had this entire week. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I did pray a lot. I did get my Bible and I did sit and I, I listened to mass on uh, YouTube and I, um, but I just didn't feel the same, you know, especially I don't know if you remember me telling you a couple of years ago, I was away from church for a really, really, really long time. And it was one of your pray 40 sessions that brought me back to church mm -hmm. and brought me back to the sacraments. And I guess since I've been back, I really, um, I don't even know how to explain it. Since I've been back to the church, I've just been like, I don't feel right if I don't go to church. I don't feel right if I don't if I don't um, go to confession. It's the most comfortable place for me to be, and um, and I've had some incredibly powerful experiences since I've been back, and and it's like now, um, if I'm away from mass even for one Sunday, even if it's for legitimate reason or not, um, I just. I get, I, I find myself going back into that beating myself up thing, you know, like, what are you going to do? Fall back into that same 20 year pattern where you didn't go to church, you know? And, and I, I, I kind of like, 
I sort of hammer on myself. And I don't even know if it's all me. I think that might be partially, you know, the evil one kind of egging me on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's this discernment is hard. Um, and uh, today was wonderful. I'm praying with nature. Today, today was was just wonderful. I have chickens and a dog, and we have um, live in a you know sort of a a countryish kind of setting in in uh, Connecticut. And um, today, you know, it was it was beautiful here weather wise, and you know, I just found myself outside and just doing the praying with nature, and it was um, I felt really close to God closer than I than I normally feel when I'm not in, in church or in my prayer room um I love my prayer room my prayer room is my second God. most comfortable um peaceful place to be and, and um but today just listening to the chickens cackle outside and and you know watching my dog chase little leaves around and and, and it was I, I just I, I just felt so much peace. I just, I just felt, and I, I got a little weepy actually, and but it wasn't a bad kind of weepy. Mm -hmm. It was just God is so amazing, and how did I miss this for so many years of my life? Because I just wasn't looking, and it's, I can't even begin to tell you what a blessing it is to finally see. I feel like the blind Bartimaeus when he said, "Lord, grant that I might see," and He is. Sorry, I'm getting weepy again. No, thank you. <laughs> and that, just a reminder that that weepiness is a gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of tears. Well, how wonderful that you have that sense of peace, that you're, you're the mo place you feel most at peace is in, in the Mass at church. And then that you have your prayer room, too, that that would be the second uh, place. Just, uh, I just thank God for what he's what he's done in you and done with you. So yeah, as you look back over those years and beat yourself up about why was I away? So that's certainly, there's three voices that are always working. Our voice, the enemy's voice, and God's voice. That voice is not God's voice. <laughs> so uh, that might be your own voice, your own self-condemnation, and I'm sure the enemy's working with that as well too. But the peace that you feel and you felt right in the church, in your prayer room, in nature with your chickens and the dogs. And that is the voice of God and that voice you can listen to and, and trust and believe and live in. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I'm so glad to hear. Thank you, Father. You're in a good place. Yeah. Thank All right, you, um, it's, yeah, I can't think enough about how much Pray 40 and Pray Ed that have done for me. Well, that means a great deal to me and to all of us, yeah. So I want to just spend a few moments now looking forward. And if anybody has any questions during this time, feel free to raise your physical hand or your virtual hand. Uh, Esther has a question. My Esther problem Cope. when I go to receive the, the Lord in the Eucharist, I go to the priest. I don't go to, you know, extraordinary girls or anything like that. It's something that tells me inside, go to the priest, go to the mm -hmm. priest. So I've been doing it for the priest. You know, everything I do is in honor the priest, not for the, the other people. Mm -hmm. And reading this in the, the 39 or something in regards, you always smile and look at the people as that you look in Jesus. I can see that. You know, people always you can't see that me. or can. No, I don't see it. That's, mm -hmm. I see them mad. I see them talking so vulgar. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh gosh, wash your mouth. You know, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, please forgive me. I can I don't see them as in your face, you know. So I don't know. I just maybe it's me that I'm rejecting it. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's bothering me. I was worse because uh, I just didn't want to do nothing with them. But uh, now I do go and say, hi, good morning. How are you feeling this morning? 
oh, the, the, and I said, okay, bye, <laughs> good night, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't stay that much talking to them because they go to church and instead of, I said, why don't you take and pray to God, he's there. I can feel it, he's there. I said, you and your God, you know, she tell me. And I said, you're Catholic? Oh my goodness, you know? So I said, mm -hmm. okay, bye. But I prayed to God that, that they would be more. I have a friend that I, she was always constantly, and I said, oh, please, Lord, help her, help her. And, um, and now she's a secretary of, of there in the church. And, and I said, what was, um, what was the question that you were asking? The question is, how can I receive people? They, uh, no, I don't want to receive it, the Eucharist under your hands because mm -hmm. I, I see them how they are. But I don't want to think that I'm rejecting them because of the Lord. I just don't feel like I should go to them because mm -hmm. it's the priest. Is the one can give me the uh, the Eucharist mm -hmm. because I, in my dream he says your hands are. Con he was asking me, are you consecrated? Your hands are consecrated. He three times he asked me, and I said yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And then he walked away, and I haven't dreamed anymore about him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. You you know, I said please forgive me. I didn't mean I I. It, I expect to be consecrated, but I consecrated all the time to him and to the priest. And uh, and I said, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you said, you know. But it was has he has he responded to you in prayer yet? Um sometimes I feel my heart go do, 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 do. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. him or not, you know, it's so palpitating on me, but I said, I know it's you, Lord. What are you trying to tell me? You know, so yeah, because there's something going on there that he needs to sort out with you. Yeah, so I don't know. So I keep saying, okay, Lord, I'm here to listen to you and the Bible and everything. So I got this, the Bible, the mercy, you know, the divine mercy Bible. Yeah. And I read it constantly. And I said, oh, right. that's great. You know, so he forgive everybody. Well, Esther you know. Wee, I forgot about you. Did you want to share anything? Father, um, what I'd like to say is, I just feel so blessed to have found you. And, and I think I speak on behalf of the rest too, but um, when I first did pray 40 days, I then realized I never really know how to pray, but through you, I've learned to um, truly encounter God. So I'm so grateful to you. And I think some of you may know that because of pray 40 days, I went to father and said, father, you do so much good for people. Um, I want to be of help to you. And that's why I volunteered. And I think many of you feel the same because listening to your stories week after week um, of how, I mean, Maureen just said, you know, she came back to the church because of Father and Pray 40 Days. I mean, such beautiful stories. So I think we have a core group following Father here. And I just wish in some ways we all get together and, and do more for Father because Father's reaching out to so many. If we can bring in more friends, more family. And, and what about, you know, our, for Lent, we have to pray fast and give alms. Because I learned from Keith, my, my, my mentor Keith now, that it costs so much for Father to do his weekly sessions with us. Um, it is it's pretty expensive. And so we want Father to be able to keep doing the Zoom sessions with us in the following Mondays and keep helping us to really, truly know God and encounter God. So, I think, Father, I think we can do, you know, almsgiving, right? Through through donation to pray uh, to, to the prodigal father. So if we can all do a little bit, just a little every month, you know, a few dollars, $10, whatever it is, something every month, but continuously, we'll all be helping Father, reaching out, helping more people. So I think I think we all feel good, right, Marie? We all feel good because we are being helped and we're helping others. So I'm sorry, Father, I just, that's what I'd like to share. Well, thank you uh, very much and for, for your help. And yes, if anybody wants to help us in any way, um, Join the team. Keith maybe can show them on the web page what to do. Does that make sense, Keith? Uh, it's my. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, real quick. Or I can. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm not sure if I have. Uh, I, I handed over the. I might be able to still share my screen. I think so. Give me one second here. Let's go with this one. 
And then I'm going to share a screen too and show them. Okay. So some other things going on. Yeah. So um, to support a couple different ways, obviously, if you guys have been on the website before, um, you can sign up for any of the programs. There's, there's more ongoing programs here. Pray 40 days is just one of them. We've I've heard pray Advent come up, but there's also praying with mass, um, examine prayer, uh, and, and, and more constantly coming. So make sure you sign up for our email updates, sign up for the programs, sign up, sign up for more of these live events. We're going to continue to do these as well. And, you know, to support, you can, um, you can order any of the, uh, products, prayer products that we have in the store. So any of the books, CDs, DVDs, medals, um, oh, those I are all ask, great uh, Keith, while you're on that page, Linda, if you're there work really quick, if they ordered something tonight would, or tomorrow, if they ordered something tonight, would they get it in time for Easter? Because I thought these could be good stocking stuffers. Keith, if you scroll down, yep. um, this, the praying with the mass there could be a wonderful gift to put in Easter baskets for all of your family. So um, a way to keep Easter and Easter, you know, uh, Jesus and Easter. But what you got from the book of the praying with mass, there's a, there's a, DVD series, CD series, and it's all online too, but uh, it has keychains there that they could take to mass with them that talk about each part of the mass. So how they can um, enter into the mass more, more deeply. So that could be something wonderful that you um, offer for them. I want everyone to know too, all, any, thank you for any, any generosity on your part, but just know that none of it does go to me. It all goes to the prodigal father and into creating all this content and stuff that we can continue to reach more people. We have a lot of good things. Now I think it's a matter of getting it out there. One of the things I, I was thinking about too, Keith, if you could go back to um, yep. uh, maybe just go to the pray 40 days book. But one of the things that we try to do and is one of the very successful things that we do is do a parish program for pray 40 days. And it's a book giveaway, kind of like Matthew Kelly has the different books that he gives away at Easter and Christmas. Parishes, what they'll do is order this book for their entire parish, give it all out before Ash Wednesday, or they could do it any time of the year. But a lot of times, if you're thinking about slipping this into your pastor's hand, um, but this could be a, a way for your entire parish to do Pray 40 Days. And we would do the same thing where I would have this weekly thing online, and then you would also have daily in-person groups that uh, if your parish wanted to do could do, but we, I could do it all online as well. But that could just be a great way. I would ask if, if you're thinking about spreading the, the, the goodness that we're doing here. And we also have that for Ad Advent as well. So before Advent, they can do a book giveaway too and give, give the books. We do it at cost. So um, Linda would be able to work with you on that, but it would be just bare, bare cost and to give it away to, to every parish in your, in your, um, every family in your parish. And hopefully the idea I love too, when people are interested in taking it out to everybody that uh, may not be coming to church is a way just to invite them and evangelize and bring them back to faith, to the faith. So where it works best is when the parish gives it away to like, they'll have it labeled out for each household. And then the first couple of weeks before Advent or before Lent, they'll have it there for people to take their own. And then when they discover who hasn't picked them up, they'll kind of take them by street or by neighborhood and then go just mass deliver them to people. So people, I, I can tell you story after story of that where people just cried that their parish came to them, you know, that they had just were so moved that their parish cared enough to, to give them something. So yeah, I see. Also uh, have, Father, yeah. I'm sorry, Linda, I can't unmute Linda. She's on ask and mute, but I cannot unmute her. So, uh, but I did order pray 40 days last week. Oh, yeah. You okay now, Linda? Okay. And I was going to say that Linda shipped it out to me the very uh, next morning, first thing the next morning. Linda, please. So Linda, if they were to order tonight, would they get this stuff in time for their Easter baskets? Oh, yeah. They probably could order okay. up until Thursday, Friday morning. Oh, don't do that. I order it, <laughs> but thank you, Linda. Wow, that's awesome. So have fun. There's some Easter gift giving ideas. One other note here, uh, Mara was saying that she would definitely be interested in bringing it to uh, to her church in Massachusetts. So um, if anybody, uh, Mara, anybody is interested in doing that, uh, let us know. We'll, we'll be more than happy to help you uh, get 
you know, information to whoever we can at your parish. Yeah. If your pastor during... wants to see a book or yeah, whatever we can do to yeah. foster that. Keith, can you also show, can you show them how they get to the web app afterwards? Yeah. So, um, or do you want to show, is that something they should do? It, it, yeah, you can access it anytime. The key thing just to remember with, uh, with any of these programs is to, you know, if you want to get the emails that go along with it, uh, as an example, you know, pray 40 days right now, we have the, the Lenten season program that's open, but afterwards we'll switch it over to pray 40 days anytime. And so all you got to do is just sign up whenever you want to, and you can go back through pray 40 days and you'll get the ongoing email. So you can do pray 40 days, any time of the year. Um, the other programs as well, you can do the examine prayer anytime, um, uh, to get there, but, um, you know, signing up for it's the best way to do it, to get access. But then after you've signed up for it, since you guys have already all signed up for it, you can simply just, um, type in, uh, the prodigal father.org and then it's forward slash pray on your web browser. And this takes you right to the web app. So you can just go here, log in. When you do log in, um, you'll, you can access the examine prayer, pray 40 days. Um, and, and the, the journal, journal is there, which is cool from here. So as if well. you click on pray 40 days real quick, I just wanted to show them. Now you have all of those there. So if you want to go back all the time, anytime, if you want to use relaxing with scripture to fall asleep, you, you can, you can always go back to this. Um, so again, this is one of the things that Keith, himself donates a lot of time and resources but this is this is where a lot of the the funds go to is keeping this kind of stuff up um but then if you if you once you get get this web page you want to save that as a shortcut and put that either on your desktop or if you have an iphone put it on your iphone as a shortcut um, if you don't know how to do that watch a youtube video that says how do i save a shortcut on my iphone or ask your kids <laughs> or grandkids or a friend um, but I have that on mine because I do the examine prayer every day. So I have this shortcut on my phone that I click and it takes me right to this page. So I wanted to let you know about that going in the future so that if you wanted to continue, uh, doing these prayers, you can do that. Yeah. And then one other thing too, if, um, if, if you're, you're not looking to order any products or anything like that, but you just want to donate to help out, there's a donate button here. Um, and you can just fill out this form, put in whatever, you know, you would like to donate. You can donate one time. You can do recurring uh, donation as well, a monthly or yearly, which we greatly appreciate. Um, very simple process to do that as well. So, um, any of those ways are great ways to support, or if you are interested in volunteering to help out, um, you know, certainly send us an email as well. We're always looking for great volunteers to, to continue to help us as well. And Thank at the very you. least, just uh, evangelize and let other people know, right? I mean, that's yeah. The that's, if that's the out. that's if we could ask nothing else than that is to say, I love this, share it, give it a try, and you might you might do that with thirty people, and maybe a few respond, but um, it, people will do it at the right time when they're ready for it. You just got to keep keep offering and and sharing. So yeah, thank you. Spread the word. Um, I want to talk practically now as you go forward afterwards. So in the back of the book is the uh, prayer exercises. So page 221 of the book goes through each of these types of prayers. This I think would be very helpful for you going forward because whenever you have, I, I would pick a, a type of prayer that you like, or if you want to just do a different one every day, whatever, whatever. But it's good to go through back through this. So if you forget, if you feel like you're not working, connecting with God, it doesn't seem to be working, you're frustrated, you're um, desolate, just reviewing how to do the prayer is going gonna, is gonna to help you a lot. And then journaling, I can't stress enough, is a good practice in order to walk you through it especially with praying like a pirate, acknowledge, relate, receive, respond. If you have a journal and you can do that, it's going to help you greatly. Lexio Divina, if you can write the step, just by writing it, you're going to just, the prayer is just going to begin to flow. So I think it's good to, to have this with you until you get comfortable with it. Once you get comfortable with the prayers, you don't you know, need to go to that at all. But um, it's, always, it's always there. If you get frustrated or lost, go back to it. 
Secondly is that when you pray, I would encourage you to have a Bible with you, a physical Bible. And I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm the worst to say this because I never do. I just have my iPad with me all the time. But there's something about the word of God to hold that and then to have a journal in your hand. Because if you pray with scripture, you're going to hear his voice. Now, having a plan when you go forward, pray 40 days is over. You no longer have a daily guided meditation and scripture verse picked out. You now have to decide what you're going to do every day. So what scripture it's going to be, what type of prayer it's going to be. And part of the preparation is that you do that beforehand, because if you sit down for your holy hour and you haven't thought about how you're going to pray or what you're going to pray with, you're going to spend most of that holy hour flipping through and getting frustrated. If you have any of these passages that were meaningful for you, I would say to start there. St. Ignatius says that uh, go where there is fruit. So he describes a tree having fruit, an apple tree that has fruit, and it's got really good apples. Why would you go to other trees looking for apples if you got all these apples right here on this tree? So go to that scripture passage and and just enjoy every last fruit that is there until maybe it's there's a dryness and you'll feel called to move to some other scripture passage. So that would be my first suggestion is to go to the passages that were doing something for you. Secondly, is to then start to figure out what type of prayer is most fruitful for you as well, whether that be guided meditation or Lexi Divina, relaxing, praying like a pirate, contemplative prayer, imagination, whatever it may be, praying with your senses. Do that type of prayer over and over with different passages. So what passages should you use? So again, you got 40 good ones here that you can always pick from. You might have other passages that you just loved or are um, have wanted to look at more deeply. A good fallback is the daily readings. So just use the daily readings as your guide and every day pick either the first reading or the response or the gospel and then choose one of those passages and go deeper into it as you pick one of the the prayer the exercises to do you could also go through a different gospel so you might go through the whole gospel we're on the year of luke right now so that might be cool to do luke but you could every day just pick another um, i wouldn't say chapter because there's a lot in a chapter but um, a part of a chapter, one scene from the, from the chapter, and use that as your meditation or contemplation for that day. So you got all four gospels that you could do that with. The Psalms, the Psalms are always known as being the best source of prayer throughout our entire church history and uh, through our, our Jewish ancestry as well. 150 Psalms, they cover the entire range of human emotion. So you can go from the Psalms from beginning to end till you get to know them more. And then there will be different Psalms that are going to work for different days. You're angry or frustrated. There's going to be a Psalm for that. If you're happy and joyful, there's a Psalm for that. So the Psalms can be really good to, to do as well. And um, so I think if I, if I were to give you those different options, that should give you a framework of how to go forward now, at least having the scripture passage. But then you want to have your, um, you, you want to make a choice of how you're going to pray with that passage. And I say that because there's, there's just a goodness in the discipline of that, and there's a focus in that. If we don't have a focus and know what we're doing, that, again, can make prayer very um, frustrating and uh, perplexing. You're going to get to a point at some point where you go beyond the rules and you, you will just simply know how to pray with it. Um, but myself, I, I know when I'm feeling dry in prayer or agitated or frustrated, I go back to Lexia Divina. I go back to pray like a pirate. I work through that process and that really helps me to, to enter into prayer. So there you go. You got the 40 meditations from here. You got the Psalms, 100, 150 Psalms. You got the four, got the four different gospels, go through each one of them if you wanted. And you also have the daily readings, which would give you content every day to pray with. 
make a plan though. Decide what you're going to do. Spend this Holy Week also preparing for Easter Monday. How are you going to go about learning to pray this way? So that's all for this series. We are, I'm, I'm going to be, Keith is encouraging that, that I do a Monday, uh, a weekly series. So we are going to be doing a weekly series, but after Easter is a lot of um, just a whole lot gets put on hold during Lent and after Easter then is a, a lot of stuff being caught up on. So we're going to be doing, I'm going to be pretty tied up, but we're going to start on May 31st with our weekly series. And so during that weekly series, we're going to have a bunch of different topics. If you want to suggest any topics, please do. But I know that the, the first couple of things I'm going to cover is the 14 rules for discernment of spirits. I'm also going to be covering um, the catechism, uh, part four of the catechism, which focuses on prayer. So going through what the, what the whole catechism has about that. Uh, we'll probably do some uh, uh, time on the examine prayer. So teaching you about what the examine prayer is like, and we're going to just continual, continually uh, do this. So again, spread the word, see if you can get people to join us. Um, if you have ideas, if you have suggestions, uh, if you'd like me doing more teaching and less sharing or more sharing, less teaching, let us know what you think. But, um, and please, please take the survey at the end of pray 40 days. That would mean a lot to me. It's very helpful. And, uh, a wonderful enriching experience for me just to go through personally all right father you'll be leading leading us through a divine mercy sunday this year oh thank you yes yeah. so on sunday divine mercy sunday i also have uh, this is my favorite image of faustina so i'll be giving a talk here at holy family parish in stowe from 2 to 3 p.m and linda's going to be there with the table she'll have we have uh um keith if you can go back to that what share your screen again so we do have divine mercy prayer medals and these medals were blessed. I was uh, in Rome and they were blessed. Uh, yeah, they were blessed by John Paul II uh, at the canonization of John Paul II and John the 23rd by Pope Francis. So um, yeah, that's there. So that could be a good stocking stuffer. If you don't know anything about divine mercy, you have to, you have to know about divine mercy because it's such a wonderful message of, it's so good, just the mercy of God. Part of why I love the image of the prodigal father is, is because God is so merciful with us that no matter what we've done or, or who we are, God just wants to lavish us with his love. Divine Mercy Sunday is a day of celebrating that. And so it, I've been, they keep asking me back. I've done this four years, even before I got to the parish here, four years in a row. And um, I love the Divine Mercy. The diary is thick. It's like this thick. But it's like, as you read it over and over and over again, Jesus, I trust in you. And you start to think other things, Jesus, I trust in you. And, and Jesus is telling Faustina over and over again, if you trust in me, all will be well. And it was that trust that made her into a saint. So I'll be talking from two o'clock to three o'clock. This will be online. So if you're just make sure you signed up at our prodigal father website and you'll get a link. Uh, and then we'll share it on a YouTube channel as well once it is is done. But I'll be talking about um, I'll be talking about divine mercy in a time of fear. So what we've been going through with the pandemic, what we're experiencing with the war, and how Jesus wants to really, to the depths of our being, trust in Him and to dwell in that trust. So. I, I look forward to, I know it's going to be a great talk. I haven't written it totally yet, but I just have a lot of good thoughts already and I'll be working on it all this week and next week. So, all right, Esther, did I forget anything else? Um, no, I think that's good, Father. Okay, good. Thank you. Father, should I try to allow everyone to unmute themselves in case anyone, do we have a few minutes for that to allow yeah, people to say something? Before you say that, yeah, one okay. second. So the other thing about Divine Mercy too is tell people that, Jesus says, even if, if the most hardened sinner comes to me in divine mercy, that he will, they will experience his mercy and love. So there's opportunities all over, usually it parishes for people to hear confession, but then to recite the divine mercy chaplet. And it's the first Sunday after Easter, which is just, a, it's a tremendous opportunity of, of what Jesus says of the outpouring of his grace of mercy that he wants to lavish on the world. So find out more about it and uh and try to get try to get to a divine mercy thing bring people to it 
pray the chaplet and and I'll be talking from two to three so that at three o'clock we can do the chaplet together. Yeah, unmute uh, everybody. And if Okay, let has... me try that. Father, I think we're also supposed to be pray, uh, going to the communion, of course, on Sunday, uh, on Divine Mercy Sunday, but also to go for confession because we have special blessings, right, Father? Yeah, there's a, a plenary indulgence. So if you go to confession on Divine Mercy Sunday, pray the Divine Mercy Sunday chaplet, uh, pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, and, and if you go to the chaplet, they're going to do all this at the chaplet. But yeah, if you can go to confession, either on Divine Mercy Sunday, and the church even gives like five days before, five days after, even a week before, a week after, you can do it. But if you can do it on Divine Mercy, that would be great. You, and you're given a plenary indulgence, which means removal of sin, forgiveness of sin, which always happens, but even the temporal punishment due to sin. That's what the in, plenary indulgence is, that when we sin, our sins are forgiven, there's still an impact on us. I look at it like a smoker. The smoker can quit smoking. He's forgiven instantly, but he's still going to have that craving for probably the rest of his life. We're given that complete uh, plenary indulgence, the removal even of that, the uh, temporary punishment due to sin. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Okay. So shall I just give everyone a chance to mute themselves for a few, quick few seconds if they want to say yeah, something so, to you, Father? Um, yeah, so you'll be muted. And if you want to unmute yourself, you can do that now, I guess. Yes. You can unmute yourselves if you want to say something to your Father. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Father. So, I appreciate everything that you have done. And I'm enjoying the, 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 the course. Good. Thank you, Father. I'd like to hear something about, you know, maybe going over the sacrament of reconciliation. I've encountered. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I've Thank you. A lot of people that, you know, even longtime Catholics that have really struggled with the way we were, you know, kind of feeling like a child and a lot of guilt and, Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so totally different, you know, nowadays. I mean, just the way it was explained to me after being away, you know, and to come with a contrite heart and just kind of like owning up to what you did, you know, not mm -hmm. um, not sit there and go on and on about what the other person did. You know, it's I, I think it's really getting to the heart of things, you know, so it, it was a good yeah. experience for me. Yeah, so I have, thank you, Keith. Uh, I have this uh, blog post on how to go to confession. So if you were to go to the main web page and I think meet Father Michael, no, media. I don't know, Father Blog. Okay, I think I have it right under Father Michael too, though, Keith. Okay. Confessions. Uh, maybe not. Resources? No. Media? Yeah, go under media and then go to Prodigal Father Blog. Okay. And then it's the second one down is how to prayerfully prepare for the sacrament of confession. Yeah. So click on that. There's a couple things. First of all, I, this is my witness and it's, uh, you were talking about, so I, what I frame help frame confession is under that understanding of the, the father's love, the prodigal father. So how much God, the father loves us. So some people have a, a, a difficult experience from growing up where they had a difficult or bad experience of confession this is my sh my story, which shares how that understanding of confession through my own stories. And if you know me, I just I vividly tell like what happened to me and how I experienced confession. But um, I share I share that story if people want that. But otherwise, I give them this uh, steps to go to confession. So an int introduction, where to begin, how to prepare, how to go, conclusion, and and more text. But the the how to prepare is a good section because I have a couple really good examination of consciences there. And so that really helps them go through the sins and name their sins. So Keith, if you want to scroll down a little bit more, um, keep going. Yeah, here somewhere. There's it. So these three examination of consciences are really good ones. And it really names, as you were mentioning, the, the core sins that we need to be talking about. So it, some of the grave sins, the mortal sins, but also um, really encouraging people to, to just name it and to bring it into the light, whatever, whatever sin that they have, um, 
And I, what I find is if people, this could be overwhelming for people. If it's overwhelming, don't worry about it. Just come to confession. The priest will walk you through it. But if people read this and do it, it makes for really, really amazing confessions, both on the penitence part and also on the priest part. So it's a big, big help to us and to, to yourself to, uh, to prepare. So this blog post is something that you can freely share with people and they'll be able to um, uh, go through it themselves. And, and it's, that's another thing you could say. It's Divine Mercy Sunday, great opportunities here. And here's a good, good blog post on it. Really, still a really good idea for one of our live events too coming up. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Father, when the Holy Father consecrated Ukraine and Russia to the to our Blessed Mother a few weeks ago, he mentioned something like confession is so beautiful. It's, it reminded me of you, Father. He's just like, when we go to confession, um, our Heavenly Father rushes out to meet us. It's like the prodigal, you know, son story again, oh, right? He rushes out. That. He's so, yeah, he's so happy. He's so happy that we've gone to confession. He's just running out to meet us and welcome us back. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to yeah. on you. Okay, well, I think we're done for tonight. So again, um, sign up on the main webpage and you'll be notified when we begin our Monday series and, and we'll be covering a whole variety of topics on the spiritual life and on prayer is what I like to focus on. So, all right, the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank Father, you, for Esther, all you do for us. Thank you for all of this. <laughs> Thank you, Keith yeah. and Linda, too. Yeah. God bless everyone.